Greetings and welcome to SmartwatchTix.com. ZBlaze B Talk 3 now has a pro version. Here it is. You're going to get to play with it today. What's the big difference? Well, there's actually two. One I'm really happy about, one I'm not really thrilled about. We'll talk about those in a minute once I tell you. If you're thrilled about it, you can pick it up directly from Banggood. Banggood is helping us out as well as uh, ZBlaze themselves. Uh, the actual pro um, version of the BTalk 3 is around 20 bucks, $21 or so. So really inexpensive. The positive thing AMOLED screen. Yep, it has got a really nice, true AMOLED screen display with always-on screen capability. That's different than the basic BTalk 3, and that's why it's the Pro. Um, the, the screen was not quite like, uh, like this one, but it was still a decent watch. You got Android 5 and above and iOS 10 and above capabilities, uh, Fit Cloud Pro, same, uh, no different actually, app for, for pairing on this watch. All these different languages are supported. You've got call reminder, message reminder. You do have Bluetooth calling in this. Yep, app notifications, all the standard stuff heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen, breath training. Ladies, you got your women's health and so forth. Uh, exercise records are on this one. You got a music player too, camera control, stopwatch and weather. You'll see all of that stuff, a dial market. Uh, IP68 now, but not for showering and swimming, they say. So I don't know, kind of a mismatch there. Uh, just try to keep it splash retardant if you can. You got all these different sensors. It's a 1.43 inch AMOLED 466 squared pixel resolution. So very high resolution, 260 milliamp hour battery. And because it's AMOLED and you got the always on display um, possibility, you can squeeze a lot of life out of it. Stand by about one to two weeks and usage time is about five to seven days. Takes a couple hours to charge it from always drained. And these are the dial sizes and other information. So inside the box, when you pop it out, you've got the unit itself nice round one big round knob here and a button down here it's a decent uh, build on this it feels metal uh oh uh oh well i'll have to get that plastic thing this is a plastic film on the back yeah Oh, okay, I'll get that off in a minute. Uh, don't jump at it like I do. <laughs> you got the two-point uh, charger in here. You can see I don't like polish these videos. I just let them go however they turn out. Um, a magnetic coupling that I get the wrong way. <laughs> and it's really nice and strong. It'll definitely hold the watch for you. Um, good charging on that one. And a user's manual. Shows you the basic information on the watch in multiple languages. Really tiny font, though. There's the QR code you can scan to download the app, but I recommend you use the link in the show notes or just go to FitCloud Pro to download it. We have reviewed that extensively. It's a very common app, and it works really well. You get lots of data on it. Um, kind of plain vanilla when you look at it on the screen um, on the phone. But uh, the depth is there when you click any of the buttons, you can go further over. And now we're into other languages as well. Let me show you this watch. As usual, press on the top button, hold it for a moment, give it a chance to light up. And we're waiting. There it goes, a Z-Blaze logo. There was no vibration. It just lit up on its own. And here we are into the opening watch face and timing out, going into an always-on analog face with power level, date, and time. Very, very sweet. You can set it for twist your wrist to light it back up again if you want to, and you can set the delay time for how long it takes the time out to, and that's pretty cool. Now it's trying to pair over here, you can see on the phone, so I'm going to go ahead and allow it to do that so we'll be able to play more with it. When you swipe down, we are at full brightness right now. It's kind of washing everything out. I'll show you, you can go down to about right there. We'll run it at about middle. Um, you have um, battery power saving mode on here if you want to, to squeeze more life on it. I'm going to bail out of that. You have your do not disturb mode if you want to do that at nighttime too. When this is lit up, the Bluetooth calling connection is set. 
it times out really quickly the way it's set right now. You do have a really nice bright flashlight, makes the screen full bright, and uh, then it comes back down to where, it, where you've set it. The BTOK 3 Pro is the model number, and there goes the phone. I've got it all connected, and we can find a lost phone if you want to. The last of all of these is your settings. Oh, missed it. And there we are. Uh, you've got a menu style, and it just shows you style one, two, and three, and so forth. Four of them. Uh, different ways of displaying your icons. We're doing the list style, which happens to be style three, makes it easier to go through here. We have watch faces that we can switch. This is one of them that we're in here. Um, here's another thumbnail of one. Here's another one, a bright, colorful one. And we're back to the beginning. So we'll pick a couple of different ones throughout the review to show you. Here's a nice and bright. We're going to come back into settings, into that display. And now, finally, I can get to screen time and slow down. I can go up to 30 seconds. You already saw the always on uh, screen time capability. Here's your raise to wake and how long it will stay on after you twist your wrist. Uh, set that to the maximum as well. And then finally, you've got in display, the always on display clock. You can shut it down. You've seen the analog. Let me show you the digital. Even though I set the timeouts late, I'll just uh, delay the video and I'll show them to you right here. There you go. We've got uh, digital with power and date on here by just tapping the button. Bring it back up and we're good to go that way. So that's display. Battery, 80%. There's that power savings mode you can set. Um vibration and ring is in here you can set these for different levels vibration soft off or strong and there's a big difference between these two strong is really uh strong and at a higher frequency as well kind of annoying actually languages here we go we're in english but you have these different european uh, languages and others good selection it looks like hopefully you'll see yours in there down key settings. This is the buttons uh, here. If you click it, you can bring up voice assistant. If you press it long, you can bring up stopwatch, but you can change these to no function or any other function that you want to. If you like to do heart rate or your music player, easy, easy to change those. Uh, I just set them to the ones that you just saw there. You can set the time and date and all that, or you can pick it up directly from the uh, phone when you pair. And then your system gives you the info we saw, shut down, restart, and reset the whole watch. And that is everything in your overall settings, which we got to from that icon there. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm disappointed in this watch. It's the user interface. It's gone back to a super simple user interface. First, I want to show you when I slide this way what it looks like on the original BTOK 3. Going over to the left, here's all of today's step count information, sleep information, and your workout information. Now, each of these can go deeper by touching it. Steps, calories, distance travel, steps over 24-hour period, I've just got some simple data on here. I haven't worn it very much, just to give you an idea what it looks like. Sleep broken down from total to light and deep sleep. And the actual chart of sleep showing the light and deep. And uh, your goal, eight hours is mine, seven hours and 23 minutes. And again, the last seven days record is right there. And then your uh, workouts, which I haven't done any, but you can set walking, running, cycling, any of these, you have goals that you can set on either time or distance, and there's several of them in here. And you notice swimming is listed, although in the specs it said they don't recommend swimming with it. So, um, yeah, use your judgment on that one. I really can't advise you one way or the other. If I were, I'd say don't. Don't swim with it. Here's your health information. You come in here, it vibrated. It's using green diodes to start taking your uh, heart rate. And, of course, I don't have it on right now. But it'll show you your 24-hour heart rate data, noon, uh, midnight to uh, midnight, and your average heart rate. Pretty good for an inexpensive watch. Here's your blood pressure. Same thing. It vibrated and is going in to take a reading with the green diodes. And again, it needs to be on. Shows you your range. And then these are the last seven readings that are uh, on here. 
And finally, or not finally, but next, is blood oxygen vibrated. It's using red diode technology. Same kind of thing. It's going to show you, well, I guess not. It's not showing you your last seven uh, readings, just basic. Then you get into stress, which is kind of fun. That uses green diodes. It's got to be worn properly. And um, when it's doing its thing, it'll go for about a minute or so, and it'll give you a number that shows you how stressed star you are from zero to a hundred and uh, minimum and maximum. I guess it scrolls after you've completed the process, but that'll all be there as well. So that's the second one in as you swipe through. Then you've got your phone calls, recent calls, the dial pad to place a call and contacts when you're connected. This is a Google or Siri for your voice assistant that you can call up. Weather in your area when it comes through, when you're paired, a remote shutter for your uh, phone, and um, the uh, built-in music player, which allows you to play music through the watch. We'll do that in just a moment. And then a breathing exercise, inhale and exhale to relax. And I think that's it. Okay, that's well thought out. Lots of different levels and capabilities, um, depending on which screen you're on and a lot of screens now this one and this is the default you come over here you get your step count information you slide up and you got your steps calories burned and you've got your 24 hour steps in your last seven days nice very nice i like that come over again i got heart rate not all three metrics that you could go into individually but just heart rate i'd have to be covering the back no i haven't peeled it off yet um to do that and it'll give you your reading, your high and your low, and it's going to show you your zones and your 24-hour heart rate and average, and that's really good too. But no blood oxygen, blood pressure, none of that other stuff is there. Come over here, I've got my uh, sleep time total, and I've got the seven-day sleep time, but not a chart that shows you the breakdown throughout the night. Come over here, I've got weather, but no forecast. Come over one more, and I've got the overall music player. By the way, this is what it sounds like. Tap the play. Kicking off the music playing from the phone through the watch. Nice and loud. Speakers right here. You can mute the whole thing by just covering it. Of course, you can go forward, backward. You can change your volume level, all of that. And it's direct Bluetooth streaming. And this is about how a phone call would sound, too. All right. And then one more slide over, and we've got our uh, workout uh, uh, criteria for walking, running, hiking, and all the other little things that you could imagine you could be doing. And one more gives me a plus sign, but if I go in here, you see I've already added everything that's available to add. And it's, it's a lot. There's quite a few in here, but... Uh, I don't know, the user interface on the original BTalk 3, just, that was sweet. That was really, really nice. So this is not bad. Honestly, this is not bad. I'm not putting it down. And the fact you've got this brilliant AMOLED screen adds so much to it. And the fact that you can also go into the always-on display and long life, it's a decent watch, the Pro. Uh, it's just, uh, I wish they would have kept the user interface on the other one uh, for this one. Now, of course, when we slide this way, we get into all of our apps, and they're organized, uh, telephone contact and call records, all this stuff for phone calling, and your voice assistant, if you interrogate Siri or Google, you get that set up in the app and everything for that. Here's your data for uh, your step count, your workouts, and any workout records would show up in here. The workouts, of course, are the same ones we saw by going all the way to the end in our looping. We've got um, heart rate. Last night's sleep time. This is what you don't see is blood pressure. And you've got uh, your last seven days blood pressure in here and the ranges that, um, and your averages. That's all showing up, but not unless you go through all of your apps. Blood oxygen, same kind of thing. we got to make sure I catch it so we can see if it's using red diodes. Yes, all right. That's better accuracy. They claim uh, when you have red diodes... You'll get your um, zone in there, and then I guess your last seven readings. I haven't been doing readings on these, but you get the drift. It'll be very similar to the uh, blood pressure. 
messages sent from your phone, which we get if we swipe up, of course, whether, ladies, here's where you are in your cycle. If you set that up in the app and paired it, the music player, you've got breath training in here for inhaling and exhaling, um, relaxation, the overall stopwatch, which is here, and I've got it on the button there, and we have uh, a vibration when we actually start it, but I can't leave it. And if I hit that button, it pauses it. If I leave it, and if I come back into it, it's still there so I could pick up again. But there's no way to get it to run in the background. It just uh, just won't. Okay, so back here. Hello. Back here to the stopwatch timer, alarm clocks, business card for NFC uh, to exchange that information. Again, set time or do it automatically by pairing your phone. Find the phone we tried. You got a calculator in this one. Nice big digits. Makes it for a nice display overall. Wow, I'm going too fast. That's the calendar, the calculator. We were playing with that. Let's do a division because I like that so you can see the... Uh, decimal point uh, information as well. Okay, easy to use, and you can clear down there. The calendar we were running through, there's the, the current date, and then you can get the actual um, calendars themselves if you want to. And then uh, overall settings, and we already looked at the settings too. So bright, brilliant screen. Now let's take a look at the app. FitCloud Pro from the Google Play Store has this icon on it. You download it, you open it, you set it all up, you pair it with your watch, you land in here, it'll sync up the data, and we can go. This is my step count so far for the day. There you see the steps, miles, calories burned and such. You also have this uh, ability to go to Health Connect now, where you can share the data between a lot of your apps. Now, this is becoming more popular, and it's a nice thing to do, so you get kind of a consolidated look at what your phone might be generating, your watch, your ring, what are they all putting out, and how is it looking compared together. Last night's sleep, now you get the chart that we uh, didn't see on the watch itself, and you can see the times and zones that you're in throughout the night, and your overall totals of your sleep. You've got heart rate, blood pressure, and blood oxygen, and you have a health measurement that will do all of those simultaneously. Now, you're just seeing the last reading, but if you go into any of these, like heart rate, you can start a remote reading or you can pick a date, go into it, and see the chart for the day from midnight to right now, or if it's on a different day, from midnight to midnight. And that's your highest, your lowest, your average, and you can actually see what that heart rate was. Try to hit that peak. There we go. You can slide it along. 135 at one. 1440, 1455 in the morning. I'm not sure if that's a real one because it's a quick one. Um, they're kind of jagged up and down here. It may be um, something to look at, I guess. And again, you got all this kind of information on each of the days, which is really, really sweet. Individual permanent record. That was heart rate. Now for blood pressure, you got the same systolic over diastolic. You've got different readings. And there's a 24-hour reading of your systolic and diastolic blood pressure up and down with a maximum and uh, average and lowest shown. Oh, and again, you can go in by day. And here it is right up to the moment today from midnight. And then finally, blood oxygen, similar kind of thing. Come in here. Oh, wait a minute. No data yet. That's right. I have trouble getting a 24-hour measurements of blood oxygen. You literally have to do a remote reading or take it from the watch. It takes a whole minute to do it. It's activated in the background using the red diode now while it's taking the measurement, but it doesn't change the screen. Back in COVID times, this was really, really valuable. If you had somebody sequestered in another room, keeping them isolated, and you wanted to nonetheless take their uh, measurements, these types of watches became quite popular. But it'll eventually get you a measurement, and of course you can get all of them from uh, touching that button. Your device, the BTOC3, here's some stuff on it, drinking reminders, activity reminders, weather reports, you can turn that on, and it'll uh, push the weather to your watch. 
raise your uh, wrist, elevated heart rate, automatic monitoring. We've done this many, many times. So look at another review if you want to go into lots of detail on all of these things. Typically what I want to show you here though is the dial library because that's different by the different watches. This is the overall dial center and it shows you an idea of what kind of colorful watch uh, faces or dials you could download to the watch. You can put one of them at a time on there. The others are stock faces, but you have a whole bunch of them to choose from. The My Dial is where you can uh, set up your own or you know download them and it'll store them here and um, just simply transfer that over. So if you like a particular dial, you have to select which one you're going to get rid of. And I love that blue one uh, with the digital and analog, so I'm not going to do it. But that's how you would replace that particular dial. The others are stock dials, and you can't replace those. And that's pretty much the app. So here it is on. It's an attractive watch. It's not overly thick. It's pretty decent size. The twist to wrist, the always on, very, very nice. It's a good, uh, nice rubberized band. Um, if I hadn't seen the BTOK 3, I probably would be really happy with this. And I still am with the AMOLED screen, but the user interface on the earlier version is just amazing. So, Z-Blaze, you want to put out a Z-Blaze BTOK 3 Pro Max or Ultra? You know, you know the magic words. Uh, to bring back the original user interface with the AMOLED screen in this kind of a package, I think that would be your last one in the three series, let's say. All right. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Uh, yeah, very nice watch. It's got great capabilities and a very decent price. You can pick it up from Banggood. Uh, I think also AliExpress, if I have another link for you directly to the Z-Blaze store, I'll put that in for you. And you can hop over there and kind of compare the two. Always check to see if we've got a, a coupon discount for you. Right now, as we're filming this, it's in flash deal. That's usually about the lowest we can get. So you can spend on figure on spending about 20, 21 bucks, something in that neighborhood to pick yourself up a really nice Bluetooth calling AMOLED screened smartwatch. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.